Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another podcast episode. We are on episode eight now, which is kind of wild. Isn't that wild? I feel like I started this little series, whatever you want to call this. I don't even really know what this is yet. Um, I don't know if I ever will, but um, I started it just thinking it would be like a fun little thing that I would talk about stupid little silly things whatever came to mind and I don't know something flipped in my brain within the last couple episodes where I'm just like I have so much that I want to share and do and, and tell you guys and it's not stupid little things it's stuff that kind of changed my life and changed the way that I view life the way I view myself the way I view those around me and I don't know if this is just what happens when you get into your late 20s, if something just flips in your brain, or I don't know. But I really do have a heart to just, I don't know, share these things with you guys. But of course, I always want it to just be like a casual hangout. So we're just going to sit and we're going to just hang out for the next however many minutes. And we're just going to talk about some things. So let me get comfortable. <laughs> I, side note, I had to paint something, a spot on my wall today, and I was taking the can of paint out of my closet, and I was wearing shorts, and somehow, with a can of paint, managed to break open skin on my knee, and now I have a cut on my knee, and it hurts. <laughs> so, anyway, ignore me. I don't know why I felt the need to share that, but like I said, we're just chatting. Um, so, this episode titled I think I'm gonna call it like it's glow up season or something cheesy like that um but this episode started in my brain as a silly little tiktok that I made now I don't take t tiktok like too seriously I just think it's fun and so if an idea comes to mind and I have time I'll make a silly little tiktok whatever so I made a TikTok last week that was like, if any of you are on TikTok, you probably know the sound that like went viral and it's like, oh my goodness, I love this question. Um, I think that one and people were getting super, super creative with it. So I was like, I want to make one. And I think I wrote like, uh, as the question that I love being asked, like, how did you fall in love with yourself again and just like give your life a glow up inside and out and I didn't really think anything of it I mean yes it's true and I feel like I have been trying to do that and I have done that um but I just didn't think anything of it I just posted it and then I got a message or two being like yeah so like how did you do that and I was like okay yeah we could talk about this and it's funny because I knew that there were things but when I sat down to write my notes, because you guys know I always write notes, when I sat down to write the notes, I was like, wait, like, what did I do? Like, it took me a second to really sit back and think about, okay, what did I actually, actually try to, like, actively do and change in my life that changed my mindset, that changed my attitude, that changed my heart? And so I finally came up with things. I think I have a list of, like, 10 or 11 things. And I would love to come on here and just sit and speak freely without any notes um, I am just like simply not gifted enough for that. Like I can't, I can't do that. Um, I will start rambling. I will trail off. I will like, I just need a plan. So I will be looking down at my notes at my phone. Um, but yeah, I have just 10 or 11 things that I have changed. This is not me saying that you have to do any of these things. I feel like I always make this kind of disclaimer. I'm not saying you have to do any of these things in particular or do these things the way that I did them. But if you are curious of how I have just like found such joy in life and such like happiness and I feel so lighthearted and I have a lot of hope for the future, um, these are some of the things that helped me to do that and if you watch the vlog that I just posted before this video um, I said that I am in just this era of if I don't like something about my life 
I have the power to change it. No one else can change it for me. And so, like, for example, I don't like how crooked my bottom teeth are. So now I'm, I'm going to get that fixed. I, you know, little things like that. Like, I have the power to change those things. Now, that's something, braces is, is different. Not everybody can do that. And I feel very, like, blessed that I can do that. But it's just, it's just an example. But I am very much in the era of, like, if there's something I don't like about my life, I'm going to change it. I'm only going to be in my 20s once. I only get to live once. So if I'm not enjoying it, what am I doing? Right? So that's kind of, that's that's the era I'm in. It's, it's up to me. No one's going to do it for me. Here are some of the things that I implemented in my life to get to where I am now, I guess. Okay, so number one, and these are really in no particular order, but I tried to like get them to all relate to each other as we go. So the very first thing that I have implemented, and I actually started this like late December, but I have like really taken it to heart now. And it's that I keep my notifications silenced on my phone for the first hour that I'm awake. That's not to say like if I wake up and I have a text from my mom, I won't answer it. Or if I have a text from, you know, my best friends and I say good morning to each other every morning. Like I do all that. That's not what I'm saying. But like, I'm not going to go scroll through Instagram. I'm not going to scroll through TikTok. I'm not, that's not, that's not how I want to start my day. Whether we know it or not, consuming, like what we consume is what stays in our minds throughout the day and if that's how you're starting your day social media can be a really chaotic thing it's just notification and notification and pictures and words and 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 sounds and music and it's a lot it's a lot it's very stimulating and I think we don't realize it anymore because we're so used to it now but starting your day off like that chaotic for me it was just it was just too much so for me this personal preference this is what I do this is my routine as you guys have seen I wake up and that first hour is reserved for for me and the Lord now not every single day looks the same if I have a really early appointment let's say I'm gonna wake up brush my teeth and go out the door you know like I'm not gonna say that I sit down every every single morning and the first hour is reserved for that but nine times out of ten it is And it just having that like peace in my head, in my mind to start my day, it just, it changes the rest of my day. Like those notifications on Instagram, that Instagram reel that my cousin sent me, because my cousins and I, we send a lot of reels back and forth. That reel that my cousin sent me will still be there in an hour. That notification on TikTok will be there in an hour. It just, it's just what works for me. So I try my best. The first hour I really like, I keep my phone on do not disturb. I have a bunch of different like do not disturb settings that I use for different things. I will keep my phone on do not disturb. But even after that, like usually the next thing I'll do, because this is just how my routine works, is the next thing I'll do is go and get on the treadmill. So I try to like keep my mornings super productive and then I try not to go really on social media until after 12 p.m. So afternoon. Then I'm like, okay, now I'm free to scroll, check the things, see what everybody's up to because those things will still be there. They'll be there. But to just consume myself with all that, like as soon as I open my eyes, has proven to me to to be beneficial. So... That's the first thing I did. And again, like I said, I started that back in December, but um, I feel like even more so now, I see like why I'm doing it and how like the a difference that it makes in my life. So that's the first thing. Number two, this kind of, this very much relates to social media and the topic of social media is I unfollowed, muted, unfriended, what else? Unfollow, block, mute, unfriend, anyone or anything that disrupted my peace. If there was an influencer that I was following that I constantly kept comparing myself to, gotta go. 
that's something that I struggle with. Not everybody is like that. I personally struggle with comparison people online and and there are there are reasons for that I know why that that is in my in my life in my mind and that's where my mind goes like to instantly compare myself to somebody else we working on it we're working on it but in the meantime I'm not going to subject myself to that if there is someone there was um actually I shouldn't name names but there were two very famous uh content creators on TikTok that and this is not me saying that they're bad people at all it was just I had to be I had to be cautious of what I was taking in it was a lot of just like like complaining a lot of a lot of like nasty vocabulary just a lot and I used to love listening to them they made me laugh I I was just interested in their life and what was going on and what was their latest dilemma, the latest drama in their life, because it's entertaining, right? It sucks you in. We're human. It it sucks you in. That's, that's why they're famous. That's why they get all these followers. They're good at what they do. And honestly, they're making a life for themselves. And I think that's so respectable. Um, But for me, it was just, it was just not sitting well in my spirit. It made me feel very heavy. And so I just removed all those people. Every time I got like a little nudge in me to be like, eh, I don't think that makes you feel good. I didn't even second guess it. I was like, okay, delete, unfollow. These are also people that I've never even met in my life and that I will probably never meet. So like, what does it really matter? You know? Um, So anything that made me self-conscious, anything that made me sad or anything that was a reminder of something that I didn't want to think about, gone. And it can be a little weird and it can feel wrong when it's someone that you know personally, someone that you've met or maybe someone you went to school with or maybe someone that you met through someone else or whatever the situation is. It can feel weird Um, in those situations. Maybe like there were a couple that I didn't necessarily unfollow because it felt unfriendly, but I'll just mute. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to see your story, you know, like things like they're always, they're always different ways to go about it. And I don't think it is a disrespectful thing. Of course, every situation is different, but I don't think it is a disrespectful thing. I think it's just about protecting your peace. And another thing too, from a Chris, a Christian aspect for me was now I, I am following a lot of Christian influencers who share positivity, who share scripture, who, you know, who post like prayers for their followers in the morning, like different things. And that like, it invites peace. And I think, and this is just a little tangent. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I think another way that that's helped me too, is that sometimes I feel very alone in my Christianity just because I don't have too, too many people in my life that are walking that same journey that I am. And it can feel very isolating and it almost kind of makes you feel like you're, we- you're not weird, but you are the different one. You are, it's very isolating. And surrounding my For You page and my, uh, what's the Instagram version, explore page and my feed on Instagram, surrounding myself with that extra Christian content it makes me feel like, yeah, you're not weird. You know, you're just doing your thing. It's a different walk than everybody else. And that's okay. Um, so really make your for you page and everything that you're consuming, make it benefit you. If it's making you feel yucky, or if you're like, oh, the the instant you're like, I don't, oh, I don't like, I don't look like her. I don't look like him. Or I don't have a car like that. Or I don't have an apartment like that. Unfollow. I saw something the other day. I'm going on a lot of tangents. I'm only on point two. (laughs) Um, I saw something the other day on TikTok or Instagram. I don't remember, but it was a a reel and it was, it said social media is designed to make you think that you should be somewhere else with someone else doing something else. It always is going to make you crave some sort of happiness from something that you don't have. And if you're constantly chasing that happiness, that happiness is never going to be within you. You're never going to really have it. So the instant that social media starts to make you feel like that, take a step back or just really look at who and what you're following. 
I didn't expect to take so long on that point, but it made a really big difference in my life. The next thing is I brought in counseling or therapy into my life. And I know that there's a big stigma around therapy. A lot of people see therapy as being weak. Um, A lot of people are not good at asking for help. For a long time, I wasn't. I kept everything in here and in here. Like, I didn't even tell friends and family certain things. I just kept it all in here. Because I didn't know how to ask for help. Because I didn't want to admit that I needed the help or that something was maybe wrong. And I honestly think that learning how to ask for help is a really strong thing to do. And I always say this and I'm joking when I say it, but I'm also really not joking. I always say that the world would be such a better place if everyone got just a little bit of therapy. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. Not to say that you have to be in therapy your whole life, but if everyone just got like a month of therapy right now, I honest to God believe that this world would be a better place. I do. Because we all have things from our past that stay with us. Every single one of us do. Whether it's from childhood, whether it's something that maybe you went through in high school, whatever it is, we literally all have those things. And my, the pastor of the church that I've been going to recently, this past Sunday, he said something that really like stuck with me. He was like, if you don't transform it, you're going to transmit it. If there's something in you that you are not dealing with, you're going to deflect it on others. So for example, after my last relationship, I learned, okay, one, maybe I don't really know how to be in a relationship properly because there was a lot about that relationship that wasn't that was kind of toxic on both sides. I also lost my ability to trust and blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And I really sat down and I was like, if I don't fix this, my next relationship is going to be a disaster. So I sat down and I put in the work. And I'm not saying I went to therapy just for relationships. I went just to become a better person, to be a stronger person, to get to know myself, have more self-awareness. It's just so important. I like can't stress it enough. I just, every, the first session is always weird. It always feels weird. I remember I was shaking before my first one. I cried during my first one. It was just a lot. It was a lot. The first one's the hardest. And then after that, like, once you, and once you get to like know your therapist too better and you become more comfortable with each other, it just gets so much better. And it just comes out like word vomit. And you're like, I have so much I want to tell you and so much I want to talk to you about. So that's the third thing I did. And it made a huge difference. And I'm still doing it. And um, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. So it doesn't make you weak. I think it makes you pretty strong actually. The next one, this is just like a personal thing. It was something I learned and I'm not going to talk about it too much, but the next one is if you want, if you're craving the presence of people in your life more, if you want to hang out with your friends more, if you're feeling a little lonely, don't wait for people to invite you out. You can invite people out. And that sounds so dumb. And you're probably like, yes, yeah, Sam, duh, like it's a two way street. But I realized that for a long time, I was kind of relying on people to invite me to lunch or invite me out or, or make plans with me. And I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if it, I, ha- I felt like a deep sense of like, oh, I'm going to be bothering them if I ask them to hang out with me. I don't know where that comes from. Now that I think about it. Um, something to talk about in therapy. Uh, just kidding. Not really. Um, but I've kind of taken it upon myself. I'm like, if you want to have people over, if you want to host people in your home, because lately my apartment's been feeling a little quiet, a little lonely. And I love my alone time. Don't get me wrong. But like, I miss having people here. It's been a while. I was like, okay. So let me invite people over. So now in October, for example, I two Saturdays back to back, I'm hosting two different <laughs> groups of people. But I'm excited about it. But like, so it just, that was just something stupid that I had to learn. Like, if you want to hang out with people, ask them to hang out. 
you know and it sounds stupid you're probably like yeah duh but you know anyway the next one is i romanticized the heck out of self-care i'm talking skincare routine i'm talking about lighting a candle just to watch netflix on a tuesday night i romanticized the heck out of my life and i think honestly i think youtube helps me with that if i'm being 100 percent honest like making these videos making morning routines making you know but even on days where i don't film it i still do the same things because that's like my that's my routine now um if like this past saturday i stayed in you saw it on the vlog i stayed in for the first time in a very long time by myself on a saturday night made myself dinner lit a candle watched a movie read before bed and was in bed by like 12 30 1 o'clock on a saturday and it was so nice and i woke up the next morning feeling so refreshed so romanticizing my self-care honestly has been top tier and it like really makes you feel like you're like you're that girl like you are that girl that does those things you know and like really takes care of yourself and even like like something as small as like oral hygiene i'm going on such a tangent but like really taking care of yourself like hygiene wise too like i'm like flossing every day now i'm doing the listerine every day i'm doing all the things Yes, I didn't used to floss every day. Sue me. I'm sure some of you don't either. So don't, you know, don't judge me. Um, but just prioritizing your self-care and it really helps you to do it more often when you romanticize it. So that was a big one for me. The next one is pretty straightforward. I made my home my sanctuary. Because you know what? At the end of the day, you're home. When you're having a bad day, you're going home to your home when you're sad you're going home to your home when you're happy you're going home to your home when you want to hang out with people in your home you're going to your home that is your that is your like what's the word i'm looking for that is your like home base lack of a better word like that is your that's your spot and whatever that looks like for you for me personally Making this place my sanctuary is making sure that it looks nice. Having a nice aesthetic that I like. Having my little fireplace, my little electric fireplace in the corner. Having my fake olive tree in the corner. You know, getting, I got a brand new mirror that I haven't shown you guys yet in my living room that I am obsessed with and I look at it all the time and I love it. Like that's making my home my sanctuary for me. That could look different for you, but just make it, a place that you love to come home to like I come home and I look at things and I'm like oh it looks so nice in here oh it smells so nice in here I got my little airwick plug-ins make your home your sanctuary and that's one of my favorite ones too because it's fun it's fun to do I want to like restain and and recolor my kitchen cabinets and I'm getting new bookshelves in here and yes it all takes money that's why you do a little by little by little by little unless you got it like that then props to you but your girl doesn't so little by little um but it just it makes a difference man i love coming home and i think that's really important because not everyone can say that i genuinely love coming home and i think that that's important the next thing i did to have my little glow up and this is more of a mental thing like none of this i hope you notice when i say glow up i really don't i don't mean like physical i really don't i mean like mental emotional spiritual glow up that's what this video is i should have said that in the beginning but i'm saying it now um but this one is definitely a big mental one i replaced old memories with new ones And a lot of times, you know, I'm sure we've all been there where like, oh, you don't want to go eat at that place because that reminds you of someone that's no longer in your life anymore, whether it be a friend, because I have people that I used to be friends with that I no longer talk to. It could be um, a relationship. It can be an ex where you're like, I don't want to think of that person, so I don't want to go there. And I think that's normal in the beginning, but at a certain point, I think it becomes important to 
replace those old memories with new ones with new people so that the next time you think of that restaurant i'm just using that as an example the next time you think of that restaurant you're going to think of the time that you went there with your friends not the time that you were there with whoever you don't want to think about does that make sense and i actually learned that from lily lily whispers in the asmr community i learned that from her when i was like 13. she said that in a video once probably she probably didn't even think anything of it when she said it i have never forgot it okay fun fact i have never forgotten that she said replace your old memories with new ones so let's say for example you and your ex went for a walk in that park a lot and now every time you pass by it you're like, uh, you know, because those are the last memories you have there. Go take your friends there and have a picnic. Create new memories in place of the old ones so that you don't shy away from places or things because you don't want to think of whatever it is you don't want to think about. Replace it with something new. Replace it with happier, happier memories. Don't just shy away from places because you don't want to deal with it. And that really change it it changes your mentality it just makes you more it's just uplifting to to think about it that way and have more the more like loving and happy memories you have just the the more uplifting i feel like it is or makes you makes you feel um a big thing this is a big thing i have three three more points this one is so broad, but I, it might be one of the biggest ones on here. And I have really learned to change my mindset in everything. So it could be something big and it could be something small. For example, we all have that thought of, oh, I really don't want to go to work today. Change your mindset to say, I'm so happy I have a job. <laughs> I really don't want to make my bed or oh, I really don't want to scrub my bathroom clean right now. I'm so grateful that I have a bed to sleep in. I'm so grateful that I have a home to take care of. Or I don't really like, I don't like that food. I don't want to eat it. Thank you God that I have food because there are a lot of people in the world that don't. And this is, is easier said than done. We're all human. We all have things that we want to complain about every day. <laughs> it just is. It just is what it is. That's how we are as people. Um, this really comes with like checking yourself. Like it didn't come easily to me at first where a lot of times I would think like, Ugh, I don't want to do this. And then I have to check myself and be like, Sam, no, think about it like this. It takes a while. You kind of have to like train your mind but it just like, it just really like, not to reiterate what I kept saying before with the last point, but it really just like uplifts you. And there are some days that it's gonna be harder than others. But like today, I, I was feeling a little sluggish this morning. I actually, I'm off today. So I, off from work, so I, I was feeling very sluggish. My morning was a lot slower. And I was like, I don't want to read the Bible. I don't really want to pray right now. I'm being 100% honest with you. I just, there's some days you just don't feel it. And I changed my mentality and I said, Sam, you have a, you should be, you should feel lucky that you have a Bible, that you are able to own one where some people in other parts of the world aren't allowed to. You have a freedom of religion. You could do whatever you want. Be thankful for that. And as soon as I said that to myself, I was like, oh, okay, yep, yeah, that's, mm -hmm, that's, that is correct. So just changing your mindset, it makes you more of a grateful person. It makes you more of a generous person. And I just think if everyone adopted that mentality a little bit, again, just like the therapy thing, I think that the world would be a better place. And I think society would be much more friendly and not as like cutthroat everybody wants to fight each other so yeah just changing your mindset and also like i have been trying to change my heart to be like more patient with people 
um, and more loving. Like, I just want to love on everybody. Like, and I never used to be like that before, but like this past weekend, Saturday, I was running errands and like, I just wanted to start up a conversation with the guy that worked at the post office. We started talking about the weather. I never used to be like that, but I have like such a heart now to like, I want people to, like, I want to make people feel seen, you know, like you're not just the guy here who is going to help me send out this package and then I'm going to pay you and then I'm going to leave. Like, I want to make you feel seen. Like, hi, how are you? How was your day? You know, just being like really friendly. And so I changed my mentality where like, maybe some of you can relate. Maybe sometimes you're, you're at work and a coworker comes up to you and you're like, I don't really want to talk to you right now. Like, you know, and I've been telling myself, you know what? No, put the phone down. Stop looking at the computer for a second and talk to them. They came over because they want to talk to you and say hi. Have a conversation with them. Make them feel seen. Make them feel like you want to talk to them. Make them feel wanted. Um, and so I have just really been, this is what I tell myself all the time. If somebody bothers me or whatever the situation may be, I'm like, okay, Sam, like that's also like, just like you're a child of God, so is he or she. Okay. And once you start thinking like that, where you're like, I know how much God loves me, God loves him or her the same amount. So I want to honor that person because by doing, by honoring that person, I'm honoring God. Once you start doing that, you're just like, oh wow, I want to kind of like love everybody. I'll tell you a funny story. I, like two or three weeks ago, I went on a date with, a first date with someone and I knew very early on in the date that this just, we just weren't a good match. Not a bad person at all. I just knew that, that there wasn't going to be a second date. The very next day I told him very nicely that there wouldn't be a second date. But the way I went about it, I really like prayed about it. And I was like, God, like this is your, this is your child. This guy is your child, whether he knows it or not, whether he has a close relationship with you or not, you love him. And I don't want to be mean to him. I don't want to ghost him. I have made a pact to never ghost somebody again because I have been ghosted. I think it's disrespectful. I think it's immature. I think whatever. I, I could go into ghosting. That, I could have a whole conversation about that, but I won't right now. Um, and I and I'm, I have ghosted in the past. I'm not going to sit here and say I never have. It's the easy way out. I have done it. I get it. I get why people do it. I have made a pact to never do that again because... I know how it feels, so I don't want to make somebody else feel that way. So this guy, I sent him a really, really nice text. I validated him. I thanked him again for the date. You know, I made him feel like seen. I was like, you're such a, like a, a sweet, genuine person. Like maybe the person that you don't want to see anymore isn't a sweet, genuine person, but you know, it differs situation to situation. But I just straight up was like, personally, I just don't think we're a great fit. But you know, I wish you all the luck in the world. And you know, take care, whatever, smiley face, like I made it such so so nice and sweet. And he really appreciated the honesty that I that I did that and that I wasn't trying to like string him along. So that just that's just one example. But like really just seeing the people around me as God's children, whether they have a close relationship with him or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because God God loves everybody the same. In case you didn't know that so that's how I like try to see people now and it really it helps it helps with like road rage situations it helps with just any situation it just and then that makes me feel peaceful because I'm not getting all riled up and annoyed at somebody you know so changing my mindset the next one is gonna be different for everybody um, as far as how you how you could do this but I have learned to just fill my spirit with joy whatever that looks like to you for me it's having fellowship in my life inviting people over hosting people I as I've expressed with you guys before I have joined a new church and this actually this coming weekend I'm actually volunteering for the first time and possibly joining the the staff not as a paid person but as a, as a volunteer um, and I'm, and I'm meeting people and I'm, you know, I'm in the process of building a like-minded community of Christians around me where I felt like I was lacking there a little bit. Um, so all of that fills me with joy. So find whatever fills you with joy, whether it's a person, whether it's a place, whether it's an activity, just Find what fills you with joy and then 
put as much of that into your life as you can. Um, and for me to finding joy has been, and again, this is, this might not be for you, but for me, I get a lot of joy from reading the Bible because I am learning what God says about me. Because what he says about me is what matters. What other people say about me, I could care less at this point. What he says about me matters. That gives me confidence. That gives me joy. That gives me peace. So whatever that looks like for you, I encourage you to seek that as hard as you can and implement as much of it into your life as you can. And the last thing, I want to end on this. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to get into a tangent because... I actually want that to, this topic to be our next podcast episode, but it's don't seek fulfillment or validation in people or things. And we're all guilty of this, especially just as in the society that we live in now, we're so consumed with like numbers. How many likes did I get on Instagram? Oh, this selfie didn't get as much as this one. Does that mean that I look bad in this picture? What is what does that mean? You know, what are people saying about what I'm posting Um, or jumping from relationship to relationship because you feel the need to fill somebody or no, (laughs) you feel the need to fill that void that somebody can fill. Um, That's what I meant. Um, Or, you know, feeling like you need constant validation from a guy or girl or multiple at the same time because it makes you feel good. That stuff feels good for a second, but in the long run, it really, when you think about it, it means nothing. Because that means, again, it's like chasing happiness, right? You could keep chasing it and chasing it and chasing it until you can't anymore. But if you're, if you're chasing something, that, that means you don't have it, right? So if you're constantly chasing it, you're constantly saying that you don't have it within you. It has to come from within you. And for me, the way that I get that into me is through the word word. That's a different podcast episode, but just don't seek validation, affirmation, fulfillment in things because things are temporary. What's in you is what's going to stay with you. And that's what matters. So I'm at a point now where I, I feel like I used to be so consumed with the idea of like, oh, am I going to marry? I'm getting older. Like who, who am I going to marry? Who am I going to date? Like I used to be, and I still do think about it a lot, but not as much as I used to. I feel like I used to be like obsessed with it. And I felt like mm, my, my parents are like, I want grandkids, you know? And it's, it's a pressure, um, that I know a lot of us experience, but at the same time now, I'm just like, I needed to get right with myself first. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm so content with who I am. I know like what I bring to the table and I know that it comes from within here because I don't have a man here to validate me or tell me that I look pretty every day. Uh, You know, like it just, it has to come from within me. And yeah, social media is fun. The likes are fun and whatever, but that can't be the end all be all. Does that make sense? I would like to expand on that one in a future episode. I feel like I talked a lot. <laughs> um, I went on many tangents, but those are just some things that I have implemented in my life that have made all the difference. I'm sure there are things that I'm missing, but that's just a little starting point. So anyway, that is going to be it for for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that you took a little something away from this. I look forward to reading your comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for being here and I will see you guys in my next episode very soon. Bye guys.